Okay, hey everybody, uh, Corcovado by Antonio Carlos Jobim, and um, recorded by uh, Astrid Gilberto, Stan Getz, Jao Gilberto. So first I'm just going to go through the song um, measure by measure and point out some of the things that the real book is a, not quite accurate on. I listened to several uh, recordings of this, and the uh, first measure is like part of the introduction you don't always hear this, but uh, the introduction is nice. It's kind of rubato at the beginning, just plays like an A minor ninth, and then. And right there on the second bar is where the rhythm starts. However, it says one measure of A flat diminished seventh. And all these measures are really two measures. So, you know, you should double the length of, of uh, all these measures. So play A flat. Uh, diminished seventh for two measures one two three four one two three four then G minor for a whole measure C for a whole measure F major for a whole measure right and then here it says a minor but it's really a C for two measures and then D over F sharp for one measure and then F diminished for one measure and then the song starts Quiet Nights of Quiet Stars. I listened to uh, Astrid Gilberto's version, and, you know, she does it up a minor seventh, um, which is like down a step, okay? So it would really be a C seventh chord. And her bass player just played the C as the bass note. So, you know, you can do D7, and you can put the A as the bass note. That's how most people play it, but it could also just be the D as the bass note. Quiet nights of quiet stars. The next chord, um, and this one I listened to Antonio Carlos Jobim's recording, uh, which I, I think has some of the same people on it, Stan Getz. But I heard the, the bass note as being uh, D flat there. Uh, though the A flat really does work better. And then the next chord, a G minor, also heard like a C as the bass note. So it's like a C suspended. And then, you know, on some versions it had the diminished chord. Uh, other versions just had F major seventh. Uh, Astrid Gilberto's uh, version is an E to a F major seventh, which is very much like the F diminished, right? Because if you have E, and put an F on the bottom. That's an F diminished with a tension. So, you know, it's kind of the same thing, but several different ways to do it there. You know, just F major, F diminished, or E seventh to F major seventh. All right. Now, most of the versions, uh, as we go on, uh, instead of F minor seventh, it really sounds like F minor sixth, but that's so much like the B flat seven that you're going to that I think that's why most people play it as F minor seventh. But if you listen to it, it sounds more like this. Para fazer feliz a quem se ama. Muita calma para pensar. And then here, I, I talked about this the other day that when you see a chord symbol, like E minor seventh, and then you see a melody note, in which case this is F, you have to think to yourself, is the F a part of the chord? Is it one of the chord tones? No. Is it a tension? No, because the available tensions for an E minor, for an any minor seventh chord, the only available tensions are a nine, an 11, or a 13. None of the altered tensions are really available. Theoretically, you can't put a flat nine with a, with a minor seventh chord. And of course, the sharp nine is just really the third, so it's not, it's uh, superfluous. F is not an available tension either. It's a note that's just not part of the chord, and so you have to treat it very carefully. And what I would suggest is play the chord first. Don't play the whole chord with the F like that. Just play the chord first and then the melody. It makes it go over a little better. And then we've got A7, and I see that flat 13 there is actually the melody note. 
And we talked about this, you know, this is the same subject here. If you if the chord symbol is just A7, but you see the melody note is F, you say, well, that is an available tension. That's the flat 13. And knowing that, you could put another um, uh, altered tension in there, put a flat 9 in there. That sounds pretty good. Then back to D7. Now here it's got D minor 7, and really in every arrangement I heard D minor 7 flat 5. And also in every arrangement, I did not hear A flat diminished for this last chord here in the, uh, in the first section. It's G is the bass note. So it's almost like that chord, right? It's, there's the A flat diminished. All right. However, most of the time I heard a, a C being in there. So it's very much like the D minor 7 flat 5. And then you just put the G as the bass note and keep the same chord, All right? And uh, that little chromatic note leading back into the next chord here. So now it's like the beginning again. Many times it's it's not the diminished chord, it's just a F major there. And then once again, F minor seventh is what the book says. It's really F minor six, but F minor seven does work better. You know, I don't think I've ever played that correctly. So, one and two and three and four and one. And then we've got E minor. Now, here you want to be careful if you're improvising. Um, if you want to stay closer to the sound of the original song uh, when you're improvising, uh, when you get to the E minor 7th, that's so close to the 1 chord. It's actually a substitute, or it can be a substitute for the 1 chord, which is C. We're in the key of C. So when you play E minor 7th, think that, just think that it's a C major chord and play in the key of C. Right? Play white notes. Don't play the uh, Dorian mode with uh, F sharp and C sharp in it. You know, that works well in some situations, but when you're playing a three chord in the key of C, uh, you know, modern players do it. I mean, I'm not saying you can't do it, you know, but if you want to stay close to the song, stay on the white keys here because that's really the sound. And look, the, here's the original melody, all white keys, so improvise on the white keys. And then we're to D minor. Yeah, and the A, uh, uh, sorry, I skipped over the A minor seventh. You know, E minor, A minor, D minor. You could just play white keys there, and this would be officially Phrygian mode, Aeolian mode, Dorian mode. Dorian mode on the two chord is great. It's just on the three chord, you probably don't want to use it. Or you want to be careful using it, let's put it that way. And then here we have the G7. I heard a lot of sus chords in there, and then sus chords with the flat nine. And then E minor seventh here. Now this E minor seventh, and I'm, I'm down real close to the end of the song now. That's an E minor seven flat five, or you can call it E, e uh, half diminished is another name for it. And almost every recording has the same little line, and it goes one, two, three. And then we've got D minor and G7. I think a lot of times it's still played like that. And then it seems like it should go to C major there and do two measures of C before you go back to the beginning. And I think probably the song was originally written that way, but as they played it, they got somebody got the brilliant idea of, hey, let's skip back to the beginning two measures early. 
And somebody told me once that that's called an elision. Uh, that means like you leave something out. I looked up the meaning of the word. I don't think it's exactly, maybe that's not the exact correct usage of it. But anyway, it kind of surprises the listener to jump back to the beginning at that point and not play the two measures of C. So <laughs> kind of an interesting song here. If you skip those two measures of C, you're in the key of C, and not once in this entire song did you actually play a C major chord. You play a C seventh a few times, but it never really resolved to a, a C major chord until you get to the very, 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 very end. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the rootless voicings that you can play. You could start with something very simple here, or if you like boxology, the box method. Uh, you know, this is like four note rootless voicings that are very flexible. That chord right there can be D7. It's got a nine. It's got a 13. 9, 13, and uh, sounds great. You know, it could also be an A flat altered. It could be, uh, what else could it be? Uh, uh, F sharp minor 7 flat 5. It could be A minor 6, A minor 6, 9. It's very flexible chord. Right now we're using it as D7. This is box three for you boxology fans. Um, you know, and what I'm referring to there is just a particular shape, this shape, all right? All right, this shape could be used like for eight different chords, uh, all four different diminished chords and four different dominant seventh chords. Now in the chart here, it says A flat diminished. All right, that's a whole tone extension above one of the notes. However, the, I hear the bass player playing this, so it could be this dominant seventh chord, D flat dominant seventh with a sharp nine, okay? So whatever you, however you're using it, that's a great rootless voicing. Then we've got G minor seventh. That's a rootless voicing because the G was moved up to the nine. And then C7, you can just stay there. You can flat the nine if you want to. And then we've got F diminished. And look how it's exactly like A flat diminished. I'm using the same chord. I could maybe take it up by a minor third, do it that way, just so it sounds a little bit different. All right, and there's F major seventh, also rootless. And you know, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, I recorded the track there with the drums, I'm gonna add some bass in there, and uh, so you can hear how these rootless voicings sound with the bass player. And of course, if you're accompanying someone on piano and there's no bass player, you can play the rootless voicings with this hand. Okay, so here's F minor seventh as a rootless voicing. And the reason, you know, you like to use this particular inversion here is because it goes to box one so easily. And there's the shape for box one. Right? Function is six different chords, maybe more. So here we go. Um, and then like I said, on the E minor seventh, try to avoid like doing this. It sounds pretty good. I won't say avoid it, but um, you, you take the song a little bit more out of the key of C when you do that. So F minor to B flat, just play something like this for E minor. And then uh, there's box two. Box two is simply an inversion of box one. See, there's box one, here's box two. These are rootless voicings. All right, and that's got the flat 13 and in it. And I could do this also with the flat nine. That one has the sharp nine. And you know, they're both altered intervals. If I put a regular nine in there, then it's a little more ambiguous. Um, it would work, but it's probably not, not as good in this situation. Situation. All right, and then back to D7. Now here we've got D minor seven uh, half diminished. The chart says just D minor seven, but it really is D minor seven half diminished, or you could say minor seven flat five. And look, it's the same chord I just used for B flat seventh. Oh, how did that happen? Because these chords are flexible. 
All right, so, you know, if you don't want to use the same exact chord, come down here and do the inversion of it, or just, you know, play the chord in any inversion would be fine. And then we get to G7. Now you can play the A flat diminished because that will function as a G7. And your bass player can play either note there, but I really think the G is the best. Though no one I know plays it that way because, you know, people don't research these songs the way they should, probably. They just look at the real book and say, well, that's the way it is. That's the way the composer wrote it. But the composer didn't write this chart. The composer wrote the song. It might not have even written it down. Might have just played it in the studio. And then some college student, you know, made this chart. And they maybe, you know, they were listening on a transistor radio or something and didn't hear the bass. <laughs> All right. Uh, now G minor seventh, moving on. Yeah, just, it's not rootless. Just played it like that. And then I can stay on the same chord for C sus. And then F major seventh. Oh, sounds good and just in root position. You know, you get, get that dissonance in there. So that's nice. Everything's pretty much the same. F minor, B flat, E minor, A minor, D minor, G7, and I think it's a sus at first, and then a sus with a flat nine, and then E minor, seven, flat five. There's the chord. There's, no, it's not a rootless voicing. I mean, this is a rootless voicing for C. Um, that's box two. Um, it's a good way to play E minor seven flat five, play it like that too. And then we've got the A seven here. And you know, this is, this is, um, you've got these altered uh, notes in that little uh, melody that keeps happening in this song. Uh, so I think the altered chord is pretty good there. If you played like A7 this way, unaltered, it, it wouldn't really sound right in this song. So make it an altered chord there. And then D minor 7th. And then right there, it just sounds like it should go to C. But just do that at the end and just do it this way instead. And then right back to the beginning. Now some nice two-handed voicings if you're just comping. First chord. I just change one note, right? Or two notes. The first one. Da -da 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 -da. And you know, I, I was playing the melody note there. Maybe it'd be better to play it like this. G minor seventh, C, diminished. Uh, just some quick improv ideas. Um, it's an Art Tatum riff there. Uh, now here, you can use a couple of different scales. The diminished is nice. A minor melodic, uh, no, no, A harmonic minor actually works here pretty nice, even though it doesn't quite fit the chord. Listen to it, so D7 first. See that? That's a nice uh, scale to use there. Then you've got a 2 5 1, so you can go nuts. Well, it's a 2 5 1. And if you're going to go to that F diminished, you have to be careful to end on something that sounds right there. So let's do it slowly. All right. And then we've got a 2 5 1 here. All right. So, you know, I'm just playing an E flat major scale basically because a 2 5 in E flat would be F minor B flat. So think about the scale that the one chord would be two five one the one's not there but on the two and the five you can still use the uh, E flat major scale and here you know it's Phrygian mode but you know key of C that's the three chord just white keys 
And there's a little bit of diminished scale there on that A7. Eh, you know, it could have done altered scale maybe. And back to D7. You know, this is, when you have like an unaltered ninth there, you know, the other tensions that fit well with it are the sharp 11 and the 13. All right, that's like a little E major triad there. The scale is Lydian dominant, which is a A minor melodic ascending. All right. Now, just knowing a good scale doesn't mean you're going to come up with a great melody. So sometimes, and I, I think this is always good, if you're working out your ideas, don't think too much about scales. Just try to play notes that sound like what you're hearing in your head. That being said, I'm going to use Lydian dominant here. And, you know, I know uh, there's my basic scale. That chord is in there, so is the A minor chord, so I can do something like... And then when we get here, you know, just using the notes of the chord is good. G minor. And, you know, I just stayed on G minor for both of those changes. I didn't go to C7, really, because it says C7 sus. That's basically the same thing, so. All right, so I just kind of faked my way through that. That's F minor 7th. Once again, I'm us using E flat scale. White keys, white keys, white keys. All right, E minor seven, flat five. You could use F major scale. You could put an F sharp instead. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's always nice to work that line back in there. One, two, three. Great song, and everybody knows it, so uh, it's definitely one that you should uh, have in your repertoire and memorize, know the chords. Know the words. Hey, folks, thanks for tuning in. Um, we've got a really great channel going here. You know, the numbers go up pretty slowly compared to some of these other uh, musical superstars out here on YouTube. But I really like, uh, you know, the folks that watch this uh, channel and uh, I enjoy your comments, get a lot of good ideas from them. Uh, you know, still, I'm still hoping I can start doing some classical music videos, and I hope I don't chase any of my regular viewers away. But I've been studying that stuff for uh, quite a while now, and even though I'm not a great classical player, I have a lot of great information uh, stored away uh, because my, of my wonderful teacher, who's uh, got a master's from Juilliard and uh, was Georgia's Teacher of the Year a few years ago. So I hope to pass some of that information along, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe pretty soon. Thank you.